pleasure to introduce Azarov Madrigal, who will be presenting on uh, the Mexico City Massacre of 1968. Uh, this developed out of a paper that Azarov first wrote in my Mexico class last fall. So uh, it's been terrific to work with her and develop this project a little bit further. So without much further ado, I'll turn it over to Azarov. Thank you very much, Dr. Time. Um, so as Dr. Sessions mentioned, I, my name is Azrael, and I'm going to be presenting um, in the massacre, uh, 1968 Mexico City Student Massacre, also known as the Massacre of Tlatelolco, and uh, addressing how um, media outlets, in addition to wit eyewitness reports, has changed the, uh, the memory of this event in Mexico. So first, to even get to the actual events of the massacre of Tlatelolco, we need to address and talk about the Mexico's political environment at the time. Um, Mexico had been under the leadership of the Free, the Institutionalized Revolutionary Party, uh, since the end of the Mexican Revolution. Um, this, uh, the, uh, the government was authoritarian, criticism was not allowed, and student voices were heavily oppressed. The 1968 students were protesting uh, the lack of freedom of speech and the one-party rule of the free. They were also protesting the rule of the elite in, in part in other social injustices. Uh, political protest under elected president Gustavo Diaz Ordaz was, um, was heavily oppressed and violently oppressed at times, as we're going to learn. In addition to this, that 1968 was a very important year for Mexico. Uh, 1968, Mexico was going to be hosting the Summer Olympics. This was also the first time that a Latin American country was going to be hosting the Olympics. Um, and one other thing, in, in, researching my, in researching this topic, one of the things that I found really interesting is on the, Olympic, on the official Olympic movement website, under the facts of the year, it, under 1968, they address the Black Power Movement, the uh, East Germany athletes competing in this Olympics, the Cultural Revolution in China, in addition to other student protests in the Eastern Bloc. Yet, Mexico being the host, uh, the host country, they gloss over the massacre of Tlatelolco. It's not really addressed. They call it a teacher and student protest, that was like, but just kind of as an afterthought. Alrighty. So the massacre of Tlatelolco. On October 2nd, 1968, 10 days before the opening of the Summer Olympics in Mexico City, police officers and military troops shot into a crowd of unarmed students. Uh, this is a picture portraying one of the buildings in the Plaza of Tres Culturas at the Aunam University. Um, this is some of the students uh, on top of the building with obviously mi uh, military pointing out at them with guns. Government sources originally reported that four people had been killed and 20 had been wounded. While on the other hand, eyewitnesses described the bodies of hundreds of young people being trucked away. So this is just kind of one of the things that the memory has changed is what actually, the actual event is very contested, so that's part of the changing memory. Um, I'm going to be showing you some footage from um, the, the Mexican barber shot um, of that day. So right here it just says Wednesday, uh, October 2nd, 1968. Uh, so this is the Plaza of Tres Culturas in the on the, at the college campus. As you can see, this is just the beginning of so students protesting, organizing, talking before uh, it escalated. As you can see, military start marching in. Not a couple for security reasons, but uh, as you can see, many start marching in. And as the shot gets closer, we can also see that they are almost ready for battle. They are heavily equipped, guns, shields, and everything. So it kind of gives you a clue of like the growing tension of this day. And then uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Um, ooh, my apologies. Um, here you see some things drop. These are indeed, <coughs> um, just to clarify, not bombs. They're actually flares. Um, that these first are going to be also are going to be addressed in the one of the testimonies that we'll present a little bit later on. But you can see as, as soon as those flares go off, panic just kind of erupts, and every all the students and all the people start rushing around. Oh, and then there we go. Okay. Um, so one of the uh, the source of my the testimonies I got of the massacre of Tlatelolco uh, was from a. a 
a book full of accounts put together by Elena Poniatsaka. Elena Poniatsaka is one of Mexico's most beloved writers. She is the founder of the, of the Jornada uh, newspaper. She also founded the country's first feminist magazine. She is the recipient of the Cervantes Prize, which is the most prestigious literary, literary prize in the Spanish language. And she also has a very personal connection, connection to the massacre of Tetelolco. She lost a brother during this uh, massacre. So um, the, uh, the following are excerpts from interviews conducted in October and November of 1968. Um, just as a warning, uh, so there's going to be some images that contain some graphic content, some um, blood and stuff. So if you're uncomfortable with that, please look away. So the first testimony I'm going to present to you is the testimony of Gilberto Guevara Niebla, member of CNH, um, also the CNH means our National Strike Committee. The army units approached from all directions and encircled the crowd in Pinsler's, in Pinsler's movement. In just a few moments, all the exits were blocked off. The two helicopters that had been hovering over the plaza almost from the very beginning of the meeting had suddenly started making very hostile maneuvers, flying lower and lower in tighter and tighter circles, just above the heads of the crowd. And then they launched two flares, a green one first and then a red one. When the second one went off, the panic started. Um, the picture that I chose to put on this slide uh, for Gilberto Guevara's um, testimony is a picture of one of the students being apprehended that day. Uh, as you can see, multiple officers obviously using excessive force. Um, second testimony I'm going to present to you is a testimony from Estrella Samano. Estrella Samano was just a student of the university uh, present that day. She wasn't necessarily affili affiliated with the committee or the organizers. Um, they started firing from, all from the helicopter. I began to hear rifles reports over my head. Those idiots were shooting like crazy. That's why the Chihuahua building caught on fire, because of the shots from the helicopter, not because of the students. Um, so it, it, it's tr the reason I, I use uh, Estrella Samano's testimony is because it kind of adds to the um, ambience of the, what really happened that day, witnesses, the panic, the, the discourse, the chaos of that day. Uh, in addition, this is one of the aftermath pictures of uh, students that were uh, murdered by the military. Uh, this account um, is by an unknown source. Uh, this kind of talks to, speaks to the uh, government's need to oppress this event from the get-go. Um, the bodies of the victims were lying in the Plaza de las Tres Culturas, could not be photographed because the army would not allow any pictures to be taken. And the soldiers threatened th to take the photographer's cameras away from them and that if they try to take any photos. Um, this is a, uh, another photo that I chose to uh, pose of um, more students being hauled away, a little bit more than 20 from the original accounts of the government. The next testimony I will share with you is uh, from Valerio Ortiz Go Gomez, uh, an attorney. Uh, the reason I found this testimony to be very valuable to the overall uh, project was because he talks about these, this wasn't just the regular Mexican military attacking these students. The Olympia Battalion, which participated in the events of Tlatelolco, was made up of soldiers, young officers, and members of different branches of the, of the agencies of the military. The Olympia Battalion was a battalion put together to run security at the 1968 Olympics, their first assignment to put down the protests of Intatelolco. This is um, an excerpt from an article written for the Siempre magazine by Carlos um, Monsi Vice. Uh, this is kind of him kind of speaking on something that was on the minds of many Mexicans at the time and trying to make sense on why this happened and why are these actions being taken place afterwards. The only explanation for what has happened in the Plaza de las Tres Culturas is the need for the ruling class to remain in power. What is more, what is more senseless than the slaughter is the desire that has arisen to prove that the whole thing never really happened. So 
So another source of uh, testimony and coverage of this um, event that I chose to use was coverage from the New York Times, so an outside looking in. And two of the dates that I've chosen are obviously um, anniversary dates of the massacre of Tatelolco. Um, the third one I chose for a little bit of a different reason, but I'll address that when I get there. Alrighty, the first one. Now 20 years after the Tatelolco massacre, um, the an anniversary will be commem commemorated Sunday with a mass rally in March in downtown Mexico City, which is expected to draw thousands. Officially, the death toll was put at 32 people, a figure um, de defeatedly repeated by Mexican newspaper cowed by the government intimidation. But the foreign press and opposition leaders say that about 350 people were killed, a figure that does not include more than a score of political leaders who were arrested in the days after the massacre and did not reappear afterwards. And then we're gonna move on to New York Times 1998, 30 years later, searching for the truth, piecing it together from memory. Um, this article actually, just to give you a little bit of background before I read, is um, it's talking about an, another, um, similar to um, Poniatsaka, um, a Mexican author is trying to use some primary source government documents to release a book, uh, to bring lights and hopefully some justice to the events of Tatelolco. Um, but as I can read now. In the new book, a prominent academic argues that the violence erupted when the government snipers, not armed students, opened fire not only to the crowd, but also to the army's own troops. The only person powerful enough to orchestrate such an event was the pres president himself, Gustavo Diaz Ordaz. Um, the broad crackdown was justified by the 1968 Olympics and the need to not be embarrassed by the events, the student protests happening on the college campus. Um, and then finally, uh, New York Times coverage 2003. Um, this is not an anniversary year, but the reason I chose to use this article is because this article talks about the way that the massacre of Tatelolco has been taught to the youth of Mexico and how it is incorporated or not incorporated for a long time into the textbooks. For the next three years, Mexico's high school students learn nothing about the event from their official history textbooks, nothing that was true at any rate. The textbooks approved by the Secretary of Public Education either made no mention of, of the Tatelolco massacre or suggested in passing that the students were the attackers that night. Um, now, the government has approved a new book, History of Mexico, an Analytical Approach, by Claudia Sierra Campuzano. In this version of this book, the events are far closer to the truth um, documented by declassified government documents. So still getting better, but still not the full truth. Um, now, moving forward from 2000, um, around that t same time. Under the, under the authoritarian regime, regime of the PRI, no formal investigation was ever conducted. Um, there was a glimmer of hope when um, a third party candidate won the election, Vicente Fox. Uh, on, on November of 2001, Vicente Fox opened up, uh, created a special prosecutor for crimes of the past to investigate the Tatalogo massacre. But even then, very little was uncovered on, um, on those who got killed or even names. So that didn't bring much, close, much closure. Now the question comes up, beginning of my presentation, changing memory. Um, with the title of my presentation, I am taking a stance that this was indeed a massacre. Um, now the changing memory varies. If you are in Mexico's working class, you may see th this event very differently th than Mexico's elite. To this day, this event's still contested. It's still, it, nothing has been resolved. And that is my presentation.